Hey, I'm Friendly Baron, and welcome back to episode 5 of my series, Casual vs. Speedrun in GTA 5. We're starting off in the mission Trevor Phillips Industries, where we get more into Trevor's side of the story around the Sandy Shores area. Since we are newly in this area, the Casual still needs to set a map waypoint before heading off to begin the next mission. If you are new to this series, this video aims to show the differences between playtime between a speedrunner and a casual in GTA 5. The casual run is not done by a single person, but rather based off watching the playstyle of many others along with reading the prompts and text that Rockstar gives. The speedrun has taken a direct approach to the bar that begins the next mission, while the casual has followed the auto GPS on the road as usual. The speedrun comes to a stop with the assist of the wall for extra stopping power, along with the jump to carry speed into the injury area. The speedrunner will drive forward just a bit once getting back into the truck in order to try and get the passengers in faster. Then the drive to the meth lab is the same route, just with the speedrun taking racing lines and other driving techniques. The speedrun takes extra care to watch for the doom buggy when crossing the train tracks, as it has a tendency to spawn at different times. If you'd like to watch older episodes or check for new ones, a playlist of every Casual Force speedrun is in the description. And yes, I do plan on doing more games in the future, probably starting with GTA San Andreas and then GTA 4. Many people have asked why the cutscenes aren't concluded, and that's because I'm most interested in showing off the playtime difference, not the cutscenes, extra missions, or goofing around the casual may do. For those who are curious, if the casual is to watch all cutscenes of this run instead of skipping them, they take about 4 hours and 10 minutes longer. Before beginning the shootout, the speedrun is going to preemptively run outside so they can move to the other side of the building later on. The speedrun will be nabbing headshots and shooting the gas tank of the car to kill everyone as fast as possible, while the casual picks people off one by one. Though they are smart enough to locate the ever conveniently placed red barrel to cause an explosion. The goal for the speedrun in this shootout is to spawn the next wave of enemies as fast as possible, so some groups of bad guys are killed before others. The speedrun grabs the free armor that we make use of in the next mission, and shoots the gas tank to kill the second wave of enemies arriving much quicker. The speedrun then heads to the north side of the building and manually grabs the grenade launcher so that a cutscene of Chef throwing at the Trevor doesn't have to be played. The speedrun attempts to kill the faraway enemies with the rifle and uses the grenade launcher on the vehicles that arrive quickly without time to pick them off. The swapping between rifle and launcher is also conveniently tied into the weapon swap reload mechanic, so that every time we switch to and from the rifle it has full ammo again. As the speedrun finishes off everyone from the roof vantage point, the casual is just finishing the first side, and will follow Chef the expected way back through the building to continue. Instead of following Chef as well, the speedrun will jump off the side of the building once the mission progresses to say to go downstairs, which will force the spawn of the final wave of enemies. The speedrun shoots the four guys in the car as they approach, but the car is scripted and follows its same path towards the front of the building anyways. We pull the driver out of the car to empty his seat, whilst also toggling Trevor's ability on and off to interrupt and skip some voice lines that delay the start of the mission ending cutscene. Just as the mission pass screen comes up for the speedrun, they will be getting into the black dubstep with the conveniently empty driver's seat and open door, all in with three new dead friends. At this point, the casual is just finishing their shootout from upstairs and follows Chef through the building downstairs to finish off the last few guys, and also end the mission, which brings us to the end of the rather short Trevor Phillips Industries. The speedrun still managed to be a minute and a half faster due to the better shooting and spawning of the next waves of enemies as fast as possible, along with minimizing downtime between the groupings. This is a pretty fun and unstressful shootout because there is basically no risk of dying since you are so far from the enemies, and a really safe mission to learn the shootout mechanics of this game. Next up is number 17, Nervous Ron. The speedrun is already entering the dubsta, and the casual decides to take it as well, since the allure of the G-Wagon is quite strong. In this mission, we will be doing quite a bit. Setup, stealth sniping, a shootout, and then flying the planes for a while, so there's a lot to cover. The speedrun again takes a slightly better route through the empty lots back to Trevor's house to trigger the mission, then takes a wide save turn to walk up the steps to Trevor's house. Taking a tight turn here can cause a fence prop to get in the way, which can either force Trevor to have to get out the passenger side and walk around, or even get stuck in worse ways. Another slightly better route is used once on the ATVs headed to the gun shop. The ATV is fastest while leaning forward, kind of like when the motorcycle was faster to lean backwards. Luckily we don't have to drive the ATV for long, as they spin out quite easily and can be quite the pain to drive, and are about as risky as motorcycles in terms of falling off. Once the speedrun arrives at the shop, they will take cover to get to the counter faster like last episode, and begin walking back out during the delay of the menu opening. After getting the required silencer and scope on the sniper, the speedrun also buys some grenades that will be used in this mission and the next one. Both players will head towards the water tower. The speedrun takes a direct route, including the jump over the train tracks, while the casual follows the yellow GPS road over there. 
There was a risky and difficult trick that the speedrun can pull off here to get up the water tower much quicker. Normally the speedrun would just go off the embankment and land near the ladder as seen here. However, this risky strat involves just slowing down to go off the jump at just the right speed and angle to land on the upper section. It's hard to pull off as we don't have a speedometer and haven't found any good reference points or consistency for the jump. And for every success like that, there's tons of fails like these. Either way, both players now climb up to the tower to begin the sniping part of the mission, with the casual already being 30 seconds behind. Due to the time of day not being quite right, both have to watch a short cutscene of the time of day changing. The speedrun would prefer to avoid these, but luckily the game does not stop you from starting a mission at the wrong time of day, unlike GTA 4, where you'd have to wait and come back later to actually start a mission if the time wasn't right. There are some random events and side missions in GTA 5's 100% category that are time of base though. The speedrun will point the crosshair where Ron is going to be to trigger the next part of the mission when it's ready. There is some downtime for the speedrunner here to catch their breath and have some water during the runs. When Ron arrives and gets off his ATV, the speedrun will begin to work on taking out the guards while the casual does the scripted actions of falling along with Ron and the crosshairs. The speedrun will shoot out the lights and then shoot the guard after he walks for a moment. This is the opposite of the intended order where you shoot the guard and then shoot the lights. The guard is killed after he moves towards the hangar to investigate, as this will drop him down in front of the path of the van that arrives later. Whilst Rockstar isn't always the most freeing when it comes to doing missions in any way you please, especially when it comes to driving missions, in shootouts like this one they are quite lenient in the order you take actions, which is quite nice for the speedruns. The casual is only now taking out the garden lights. The van isn't far behind for the casual, but the speedrun setup will gain them lots of time in a moment. The speedrunner's van will stop early to investigate the body, and can be shot as soon as he gets out, unlike how for the casual, the van will drive a ways and has to finish a longest phone call before he can be killed. Watch now the speedrun, after he takes out the van driver, a consistent order of spawns happens that can all be shot super quickly, then a flick back to Ron to trigger him to start moving again. The speedrunner is going to take out the final two guards from the rightmost building, and then waits for Ron to finish walking and spawn the next enemies. The casual waits for his van driver to finish his last ever phone call before continuing, then will do the shooting of the other guards, taking much more time to locate them than the speedrun did. The speedrun is waiting on a motorcycle to spawn. Usually the motorcycle is shot over next to Ron, but it can be hit within this small gap above the van, saving a bunch of time. It's a tough shot for sure and takes some practice. After getting the rider, the speedrun will flick over to the helicopter and take it out quickly, which plays the next cutscene. The speedrun will pistol down one gun on the tower, then head around the shootout to throw grenades at the van in the gas station. Multiple grenades are thrown because the van will sometimes not explode on the first one for some reason, or sometimes an NPC survives or wasn't in the van yet. Killing this van with grenades saves a lot of time compared to normally having to shoot each guy individually, and the enemies are much more exposed on this side of the hangar after driving around it. I like the park in this nook on the trailer as it gives me cover while dismounting the ATV, as well as putting me on the left side to begin shooting right away. We can leave one biker alive, then run towards the plane looking backwards, otherwise the animations of Ron getting into the plane might play and slow things down. After getting onto the plane, the rest of this shootout is basically an auto-scroller. The speedrun shoots these guys as soon as possible and utilizes gas tanks to get them done quicker, but it doesn't really speed up besides just not failing the mission. The casual has been following the voice line prompts and is only just now shooting the biker in the farther along spot then getting the helicopter down too. The casual shootout is slow, going the expected route straight towards the hangar and taking down the enemies that will be semi-randomly placed, as well as having the wait for the van to arrive later. While we wait for the casual to catch up, I'll let you know this episode has been recorded and edited in my new computer. It should look a bit better, and I'll be playing around with lots of options for future audio quality too, as well as more advanced editing to possibly show specific tricks or moments of interest better. So thanks to everyone continuing to watch this series, and if you are able, subscribe to the channel for future episodes and other GTA and speedrun content really helps me a lot, especially if you're watching the videos off recommended anyways. Once reaching the second plane and getting in, the goal is to get off the runway. The speedrun can simply turn right onto the dirt road which takes us technically off the runway, then jump out and abandon the plane. This puts us in the air already flying at a checkpoint much farther along that is supposed to activate only once you are fully taken off, but this skips us to it faster. 
The casual is flailing around a bit to lose the biker on the wing as prompted by the voice lines, but the speedrun doesn't need to worry about that. Once we get going fast enough, he just falls off naturally. The speedrun enters the first person to look at the altimeter inside the cockpit. Amazingly, it actually functions and provides a useful stat. In the real world, the higher a plane flies, the less air resistance it encounters and can in theory go faster. In GTA V, this is somewhat mimicked, except that it's a hard value at 900 feet in the air. So in this plane, under 900 feet we go about 110 knots, but once above 900, we go about 140 knots on the in-game indicator, so about a 20% increase in speed. So the speedrun is mostly flying by using the altimeter to stay at about 1000 feet, in the minimap to cut the corners that Ron follows. Following the road on the south side of this canyon is a safe distance to cut without getting too far from Ron to fail the mission. Once getting near the drop point for the weapons, we lose about half our altitude in order to be low enough to drop the package. As the bay doors open, the speedrun immediately turns and spams the button to throw them out as soon as the cutscene ends, and the momentum carries the package down into the landing zone anyways. The speedrun then regains altitude to be above 900 feet again for extra speed, and then a bit of extra height to clear the mountains and take a direct route back to the other airstrip. The in-game voice lines warn you to fly low with Ron over the river and not fly over Fort Zancudo. However, it's an empty threat and the game does nothing to us for flying over the military base. The casual has followed Ron through the valley and without the skip, so they are only just approaching the drop point. This flight isn't particularly difficult and simple enough to just follow Ron's plane along. For the speed run, I'll zoom into the altimeter for a moment. It's basically red like a clock. The little hand is the 1000s and the big hand is the 100s. So right now the plane is just at about 1200 feet, higher than our 900 goal to go over the mountain, but we'll drop it back down after we've cleared it. As the speed run approaches the landing strip, they tactically miss the landing strip. The goal is to get the plane inside the hangar, so we can just fly right in. I use the barn I fly over as a reference point to put the gear down and hit the brakes as soon as they have dropped, and that gets the plane to slow down enough to be forcibly stopped by the checkpoint in the hangar. Hitting that going too fast will still crash you into the back of the hangar anyways, so it's a rather difficult landing to pull off. The casual also brings the plane back with a normal slow landing, then an unskippable cutscene that shows off the business owning feature plays to end this mission. And it was a pretty long one, with the speedrun taking nearly 10 minutes, and the casual 4 minutes longer than that to be nearly 14 minutes. The better arrival to the airstrip, shooting of the guards, optimized shootout in front of the hangar, then skip and strats when flying, all add up to some pretty big time save. After that cutscene ends, we get the mission pass screen, and move on to Crystal Maze, where Trevor confronts the farm gang that has taken his business partner away. The speedrun grabs the conveniently spawned dune buggy next to the hangar here. The casual wants to be fancy and fly to the next mission, but sadly for them, it's not actually faster by the time they get moving and land again. Even for the speedrun, taking the plane is not ideal. It is possible to land near the bar where we start the mission at, but you either have to park far away and run a lot in order to get to the mission to not despawn the plane, or hope you get lucky with a good car spawned outside the bar, which I'd estimate I see happen only 5% of the time or so, as we need a good car for this mission and the next, and the Doom Buggy serves the off-roading purposes we have coming up quite well anyways. The speedrun took a direct route over the hills to the bar, and jumped to carry speed into the doorway again, and then immediately heads back the same way, directly towards the farmhouse. Our casual took the plane over, landed, and grabs a random truck to finish the distance to the bar, then uses that to drive over to the house. I'm going to continue to keep the casual fast forwarded as they follow the yellow GPS over to the next part of the mission. The speedrun is going to approach from the other direction, and we'll leave him pause for a moment and watch the casual. I remember this shootout being quite difficult the first time I played the mission, and have seen similar difficulties from many others. Our casual ends up dying twice once arriving and being told they need to fight their way in. After the two deaths, he strategizes a moment and decides to enter more slowly from the rear of the house, as it looks to be and is a more covered area from the rear. The casual fights their way inside, clearing out all the enemies, then grabs the gas can down below, which the game prompts you to pour all the way outside following the dots, then shoot a blaze to blow up the house. The shooting in this game isn't particularly hard after a little practice compared to something like CSGO or PUBG of course, but it does take some skill. I was never much of a big shooter game player myself, and I used to play CSGO with Get This, a trackball mouse, probably the kind you've seen your grandma use while all you have is a ball you move with your thumb, so my skills aren't very good yet. 
At this time of recording, I'm actually second place on the leaderboard for GTA 5 speedruns, and my main time losses to the world record holder Burhack are the shootouts. His optimization of the shooting and the run speed he can carry while mowing down enemies is amazing, and I still expect it to take me another month or three to reach his level. So the casual has poured the gas and set the house ablaze, and it took a good five or so minutes to figure out that shootout and get it done. That's much too much work for our lazy speedrunner. He's going to drive straight up to the front of the house and park next to this pole, then get out and run straight into the front door. Once inside, Trevor's power can be used to take no damage and avoid being knocked slower by any punches. The speedrun heads directly to the basement to grab the gas can, which causes most of the enemies to despawn. Also, we don't need the gas can after picking it up. We instead take out a pistol and use it to whip around just at the top of the stairs and use the quick throw hotkey to toss one of the grenades that were purchased back on the last mission down into the basement, then run like hell out the back door as the house begins to explode just as we make it out the door. The timing is tight, but when done well, we are in and out of the house within only 40 seconds and no shootout required. As well, the doom buggy is then teleported to directly in front of us as long as it's parked back where we did originally. There's a reason this episode has the title it does. Both players head away from the house, and once a certain distance away, the mission ends. Thanks to the better drive over and that awesome skip to blow up the house, the speedrun is basically five and a half minutes faster in this mission, and has great fun while doing it. Finally for this episode, we go to Friends Reunited, where Trevor will head to Los Santos on his quest to seek Michael, after making a stop to clear out some more lost gang members. Though, our speedrun won't exactly come to a stop. You'll see. Both players head back to Trevor's house now, with the speedrun taking a slightly better route off-road next to the lake, as well as small movements to get weighed into the car faster. We always start driving as soon as a character's animation to get into the car begins. The speedrun will continue to use the doom buggy, as it's decently fast and will be off-roading a fair bit so that it makes up for any speed lost on the road. The casual gets into Trevor's truck, as expected by the game, then both head over to the camp to clear it out again. The idea behind this mission is that Trevor is going to sneak in, plant sticky bombs on the trailers, and then sneak out. To his credit, our casual will manage to take it slow and place all the stickies without getting caught. Our speedrun, however, treats this mission like a fast food drive through and will just drive straight through the camp throwing the stickies. We go so fast that by the time the NPCs react, we are already throwing the last sticky bomb. We throw four stickies, blow them up, then throw and explode the last one in order to skip a cutscene that plays when all five of them blow up at once. And just like that, our speedrun is already done with the camp before our casual is more than a few feet away from his car. It's pretty nice that Rockstar is freeing enough to let us use strats like this to play as we choose. Sadly, from what I've seen and heard, Red Dead 2 is not really that kind of game, which worries me for both the casual play and speedrun ability of future Rockstar games like a hopeful GTA 6. I want more Hitman-style games, open-ended gameplay, not to watch a darn movie. I think a mix between the older GTAs and GTA 5 is a good mix. Really polished storyline to follow, with guides for your first playthrough, but lots of freedom to do it your own way on other playthroughs. Anyways, our casual is sneaking through the camp, throwing stickies, trying to not get seen, while the speedrun takes off-road routes and then heads up the hill to go directly to the outlook that's the trigger for the next mission. Finding the best route in this area is a mix of going directly where you want to go, but not going so direct that you spend too much time being slow in the dirt when a better road is nearby. These missions here are my favorite in the run, partially due to the cool strats that make up so much faster, but also they are just pretty fun to play. The first hour of the game is pretty highly optimized and can have a lot of things go wrong that are sometimes outside of the speedrunner's control. But this group of four missions is pretty much based on your skill and play, so it makes it quite fun, and a bit of a break from the stress that the start of the run can be. The speedrun is again heading off-road up the hill to go directly over to the checkpoint, while our casual has finished with the sticky bombs in the camp, watched the cutscene for all five exploding at once, and is now following the GPS route on the roads over to the next yellow dot. Air control of the doom buggy when headed down this hill is quite important to keep it flat enough to not go spinning wildly or worse. Both controller and keyboard players can do air control, though it's actually one of the things that's easier on controller. As both sides sink back up to hit this checkpoint, the speedrunner is going to go wide left around the bushes instead of straight on in. This is to avoid the forced exit of the car that you see the casual do right now. After the cutscene and getting back into the car, the speedrun will just smash through the fence and head down the hill instead of following the road. And then again skip the road and go around the jump, air time is slow time, to get down to the main road, then follow that down through the city to the end of the mission. This drive can be tough as there's lots of jumps headed next to the pier for the speedrun, and the wide car causes major spinouts when it hits something. 
The casual follows the hill road down into the city and generally has no issue following the old GPS route. The speedrun takes an early turn onto the next road so they can drive straight into the house parking area at the end, and once arriving at Floyd's house, the speedrun will jump out of the car when forced to stop and get a jump and run to get closer to the bottom of the stairs for when the cutscene begins, instead of just sitting in the buggy still. Then the speedrun will punch up the stairs as it makes us move slightly faster, and that'll be the end of the mission. Thanks to the massively better method of blowing up all the trailers nearly instantly, along with the better driving and bet movement, the speedrun finishes this mission in less than 6 minutes, under half the time that it took the casual, one of the biggest differences over a long mission we'll see probably. So over this episode, the casual saved about 18 minutes, which is way above the average compared to previous episodes, and the speedrun has been playing for almost 1 hour less than the casual has. Neat! Thanks for watching, and as always, I'm making this episode as fast as I can with my free time, which will hopefully be more free time in the future if my channel keeps growing as it has been. Thanks, and see you next episode.